Happy Friday, Black Twitter. It's me, Jeannie, giving you t-shirt, towel, and tired. It's been a long week, but it's over. Hallelujah. Today I'm gonna tweet for people who have ever gone to a birthday party and sang the Black Happy Birthday song only to have someone not know when to quit. You know that person. Everybody's singing the chorus like you're supposed to. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. And just when you think it's over, here comes that one random person talking about some happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And now it's awkward because nobody knows where to end the song from there. And it just sounds wompy and depressing and like you don't actually want the person to have a happy birthday. Don't be that person. Don't sour the happy birthday song for someone. Just stop at the chorus like you're supposed to. Like a decent human being. Stop trying to see the world burn. Anywho, this is your random reminder that there's a Good Morning Black Twitter newsletter. And if you want to do what the cool kids are doing, go to goodmorningblacktwitter.com and sign up. It goes out Sunday. And by the way, whether you're watching or listening to the show, subscribe and rate it. I'd appreciate it. Okay, so Thanksgiving is less than a week away. And if previous tweets and hashtags are any indication, quite a few of you are looking forward to coming to Fisticuffs with your family members about a wide range of topics. I can't say that I know this life. My family can come together and play spades without somebody getting stabbed. But if you do know this life, might I suggest that you come together for a more worthy cause like bigotry? Look, with Donald Trump as president, we all got to start pulling our own weight in the fight against bigotry. And if we're being real, white people aren't the only ones with bigots in their family. So I would like to propose a new initiative that I'm calling Start at Home. Hashtag start at home. If you can clap back at Aunt Teresa for sleeping with a married man, you can clap back at Cousin Day Day for being transphobic. If you can clap back at Uncle Vernon for being a deadbeat dad, you can clap back at your brother for being a misogynist. All I'm saying is we all have our front lines. And you're clearly already about that pop off life. So why not pop off to kill bigotry where it lives? Hashtag start at home. I was thinking of this because we all call out people online, right? It's easy to get the bigots on Twitter. Don't just call out people on the internet for oppressive behavior. Yes, we should be making them uncomfortable in public places, but there's a whole group of people who I would hope have love and respect for you and might even take into consideration what you have to say, even if they get defensive about it at first. If you can collect perfect strangers, you can gather your family members. Hashtag start at home. And by the way, I'm not saying try to make yourself an expert on topics you haven't even read about. If you don't even know a trans person, maybe don't try to be an expert on gender fluidity. That being said, you can definitely tell someone you think a joke is inappropriate. Or even say, you know, at one point I used to think that way too, but then I realized I kind of sound the way white people sound when they talk about black people. And I don't want to sound like that. This is somebody's life we're joking about. Or something like that. This Thanksgiving, start at home, America. Hashtag start at home. Speaking of starting at home, when do y'all get your cousin Sage? Steel family, that's you. I don't know who you are. I don't even know who she is, but if the back of your family reunion t-shirt has the name Steele on one of the branches, you gotta come get your cousin. Sage Steele is apparently some ESPN personality who took to Facebook to write some long, stupid posts that honestly, it took me like three tries to get through because when I try to read the thoughts of stupid people, it gives me like, <laughs> But after reading it three times, what I gather is Sage Steele has some personal problems that because she's a special snowflake, she decided to try to make black people problems. And Sage, that's where you messed up. Sage was out here asking all the wrong questions. 
Why do we shun black people who speak differently? Why do we shun black people who have good hair? You really told on yourself, Sage Steele, because if you actually hung out with black people, you'd know that in 2016, saying good hair is taboo. And as somebody who has naturally wavy hair, can I just testify that no one has ever shunned me for not having 4C hair? Girl, bye. Also, you know where a lot of black people who think differently find themselves? Hanging out with other black people who think differently. Imagine that, Sage Steele. Imagine hanging out with enough black people and knowing black people well enough to know that we're not a monolith and there are quite a few black people who might think like you. There are black basket weavers who hang out with black basket weavers. There are black atheists who hang out with black atheists. I'd imagine there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of biracial black people that you could have hung out with. Though the biracial people I know wouldn't want to be associated with your dumbass. Just saying. My point is, Sage Steele, you could have found your tribe. You could have found your group of black people to roll with. Instead, you decided to make your personal problem a black people problem and write some stupid long posts on Facebook. Have several seats. In other get your cousin news, West family, it's your turn. Y'all are already used to getting Kanye. I'd imagine you already have policies and procedures in place. So I'm gonna need you to ring the alarm because he's acting up in the supermarket. Kanye West is apparently still on tour. And just last night, a video came out of him saying that he would have voted for Donald Trump. Roll save. I said something that was kind of politically correct. I told, I told y'all I didn't vote, right? But I didn't tell you, I guess I told you, but if I would have voted, I would have voted on Trump. At this point, I'm certain Kanye just says anything to get attention when he doesn't have the attention that he wants. This is why it was perfect for him to marry into the family that gets attention for attention's sake. I mean, what is there to even say? There's not even anything to get outraged about. First of all, it's Kanye. Who cares? And then, so you didn't vote, but you would have voted for Trump? Boy, bye. Here's that attention you wanted. Run along and stop embarrassing your family in front of company. Poor Kim. You gotta kind of feel bad for Kim Kardashian a little bit, right? Because poor Kim, she's doing everything to prove that she's down. She's making fried chicken and mac and cheese. She's out here talking about Black Lives Matter. And here comes Kanye talking about he would have voted for Trump. Oh, Kanye. By the way, all you people who were saying you'd vote for Kanye West in 2020, <laughs> that sips for you. Well, that wraps up today's episode. And honestly, I don't really want to talk about Sage Steele or Kanye, but if you have links to resources about transphobia, homophobia, ableism, sexism, etc., 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 bigotry basically, hit me up with those links because I like to signal boost them to tell people where to go so they can find out more information and arm themselves better when they go to talk about these things with their family. Because we're going to start at home this Thanksgiving, right? Let me know in the comments at goodmorningblacktwitter.com or tweet me at GMBT show. Let me know if you're down. We're almost through this week. A few more hours to go. I'll see you back here Monday. Have a good morning, Black Twitter. <laughs>